All right, so now we're getting into the, uh, the slide plates. So we have our two big slide plates and everything's gonna be attached to these. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting these together. On the inside of these bearings, it's a little bit askewed. So I'm just taking my there we go. Oh, this is like two sides. So there's like a flat side here and then there's like a divot side and the divot side goes out. Divot side out. We got a washer, a second washer. Interesting. That seems pretty darn secure. Now we have our stepper motors. So let's take out two of these. Okay, so there's our white. And it goes in the back. This is the back. There's one. The belt is gonna run around this one, up and over this one, down and then around this one. Um, and looks like these are all perfectly aligned in a straight line, which is great because that's exactly what we need. All right, let's do one more. Everything's tightened, the mirror plate, the plates are mirrored. They look great. They got the motors on, all the wheels on. All right, so we have our two. So I need, this is actually the left one. So this is the one I want right now. So now we're doing this drag chain bracket. Okay, we got our bracket. All right, so the bracket goes up like that. So these guys are now done, as far as I can tell, from what the instructions say. So we're gonna set those aside. Now we're gonna move on this guy, which is like the X carriage. So this is kind of, will, this will hold the router um, somehow, and then this will move back and forth, kind of in the middle of the machine. So apparently this gets a little tricky because you have to put wheels kind of on the inside of this guy, which is gonna be a pain in the behind. We have like these uh, recessed holes. So we have our flat washer, or flat bolt nut that goes in there. Then we put, oh man, it's gonna be a little tricky. That wasn't bad. Let's flip it, do it again. So those are in, they're aligned, they look good. That's pretty easy. Okay, now we move on to uh, V wheels. All right, where do these go? These go on the big holes on the outside. All right, there we go. So inside of here, you can see, there are just a bunch of little wheels. So we got the, these are the V-belts. This is what'll roll the whole cart back and forth. And then on the inside in there are the um, guide belts. So that's, that's what um, will guide the belt back and forth. Oh, there's more. Oh, aha. Ah, so there's more wheels. Okay. All right, so now this thing is really done. So now instead of, <laughs> there's just a lot of wheels in there. <laughs> so yeah, there's a total of what, one, eight, nine, just 10, 10 different wheels in there. It's pretty cool. And it rolls nice and smoothly. Now let's add our motor. Oh, and it looks like these are threaded already. So I don't have to do any like nuts on the inside because it is already threaded. What do you know? Okay, so our little uh, electronic bit faces up. 352705. Okay, so yeah. Alright, so on the instructions it lists short drag chain bracket for this one. Short drag chain bracket, this guy. But then on the X carriage, 
it just lists drag chain bracket, but the number, the, the like skew number of the item is the exact same. So I'm just going to use the other short chain bracket, not this way, but this way. Those are all done. So now we're moving on to the gantry. Nice. How long did that take me? All right. So this took me an hour and a half just to do these guys. <laughs> all right. Took a little bit of time. The next step is to assemble the whole gantry mechanism. First, the carriage goes on the gantry rail. The bottom wheels on the carriage adjust tension to make a tight fit. I had to loosen them a bit because they were too tight to even fit on the rail. The wheels on the slide plates have the same adjustability. Now this is where I ran into a little problem that doesn't get fixed right away. On either end of the big gantry rail are threads that accept button head screws. Four screws go through each side plate to secure the rail. When I put the screws in, the inside threads of the rail were stripped because I could not get a secure connection. This is super crucial because it keeps the entire router from tipping forward. It wasn't just bad on one side either. This happened on both sides. I reached out to Inventables and they were really helpful. Sent out a replacement rail at no cost. I went ahead with the rest of the installation because I figured I could just swap out the bad rail when the new one arrives. I'll cover that in a later video. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna about, I'm about to put these guys on, but I ran into a little bit of a problem. You can see that the edge of this, the stiffener piece, sticks out just a little bit further than it should over here, because when I put this on, I basically yoinked it as far this way as I could, um, but I shouldn't have done that. I should have just blended it flush with this edge because now I have to go through and unscrew all of these ones along the bottom and push this whole thing down just a hair, which isn't the worst, but it's just something that I shouldn't have to do because I should have planned ahead and it wasn't quite clear in the instructions. So, um, that's just something, it's like just the tiniest amount, but it's going to make a big difference when this piece is sitting up here and it's putting pressure on the stiffener piece in a weird way that it shouldn't. All right, let's just fix it. These side stiffeners function just as it sounds. They stiffen the sides so it doesn't wobble at all. This is the bracket that will hold the Z-probe, something that I'll use before almost every cut. Now we're going to prep and install the Z-axis. These are stickers that go on either side. This is used to help set the height of the dust collection. The Z-axis is connected to the carriage with these four T-nuts and button head screws. This is also how I'll adjust the lean of the router to make it flat with the surface. Because the connection holding the gantry rail is not good, you can see how much wobble it has and how bad that'll be for making precise cuts. The spindle mount connects directly to the front of the Z-axis. Turn out the spindle. All right, so let's remove this thing. Come on. Oh, just. I can need that. Just like that. So for just the heck of it, I am going to power this guy on. <laughs> Make sure the router works before I... God, that would suck. This is like a busted router. Okay, how loud is this going to be? That blows quite a bit of air. Cool, router works. <laughs> Moving on to the home switches. Oh my gosh, these are tiny. Here we got our cables. Oh, we got three of them. Micro switch. These are tiny. The X and Y homing switches have these little bumpers that attach to the rails. The instructions don't give specs on how far to place them from the edges. 
I'll make those adjustments during calibration. Right behind the gantry rail, a second rail runs the width of the work area. It functions solely as a support rail for the drag chain and cables. During this step, I added two more screws into the main gantry rail. It helps stiffen up the rail a bit, but not enough to stop the wobble. Next is to prep the drag chains. I popped open all the brackets and removed one end from each chain. Now we are getting into wiring up all the cables. This is the Z-Probe cable, and it goes first because it's a bit difficult to add in after the drag chain is in. Next, the drag chain connects to the back of the X-Carriage. All of the cable packages are labeled, so I place them in the spot where they'll be plugged in. Let's go there. Z's, X's, Y's, and this guy will be for this, uh, where is it? This one. Check it out. It's labeled. So on here it says Z-axis on both ends. So that way when I get to the other end and I'm connecting it to the control box, I don't have to play a guessing game. It's already labeled. That's pretty neat. Super convenient. It's pretty straightforward from here. Just connect the wires in the correct spot and run them through the drag chain. The other end of the drag chain gets tightened down in a spot that allows the carriage to easily reach either end of the gantry. Zip tie brackets secure the wires to the support rail. Before cinching down the zip ties, I pulled the excess wire through the drag chain. The other drag chain connects to the already installed bracket on the slide plate. There are more wires that go into this one, so it gets a little bit more crammed. And with this, we have completed a major part of the machine assembly. A few hiccups along the way, but nothing that can't be worked through or resolved. It's so cool to see this machine come together as each new piece is assembled. Next is dry belts that will allow the motors to move the router all around the work area. Okay, that's it for now. See ya.